In this tutorial, we will explain how to set up a display configuration using the ISOBUS load and go feature of the end command displays. A display configuration is required to be able to use autoswath and variable rate prescriptions and to be able to map and record data when operating with an ISOBUS implement that supports task controller. For this example, we will build an application configuration for a pull type sprayer that has the AgLeader ISOBUS liquid control module installed. But the load and go feature will work for any ISOBUS planter, seeder, or applicator. Before we begin, Universal Terminal and Task Controller must be enabled in the ISOBUS settings, and we need to configure the implement in Universal Terminal and make sure it is actively connected. These steps are covered in detail in other video tutorials on our channel. From the home screen, tap the Universal Terminal app. Here we can see that there is an ISOBUS configuration that is actively communicating. Once that is verified, tap the back arrow to return to the home screen. Our example is a sprayer, so we will begin by tapping the application app. Tap the green plus to create a new configuration. Our tractor was already entered in the display, so we'll select John Deere 8430 and tap the next arrow. Tap the green plus to create our new implement. Enter a make and model for the sprayer. and tap the next arrow. Next, we need to specify whether this implement is connected to the tractor by the rear drawbar or rear lift arms. Our example sprayer attaches using the rear drawbar on the tractor. Tap the next arrow. We need to measure and enter the distance from the hitch to the implement axle. Tap the next arrow. The load and go feature appears on the application channels page. The in-command display will automatically build a controller to match the connected ISOBUS implement, and that's why the settings must be entered in Universal Terminal first. Review the container capacity and tap the Edit Container button to adjust the capacity if needed, then tap the next arrow. On this sprayer, we don't have any additional devices such as a NORAC UC5 boom height controller or Optrix crop sensors, so we will leave those unchecked. Tap the next arrow. If the implement provides a rear hitch for a second implement, we can enable a rear hitch and enter the offset on the screen. Our example sprayer does not provide a rear hitch, so we will not check the box. Tap the next arrow. The implement name defaults to the make and model of the implement that we specified earlier. The name can be edited by tapping the keyboard icon. Tap the green check to finish creating the implement. On the Implement Selection screen, verify that our new implement is selected and tap the next arrow. We do not have a second implement connected on our rear hitch in our example, so we will select None and tap the next arrow. On the Speed Source Selection screen, we will leave the speed source set to Display GPS to be able to use AutoSwath and map the as applied data. If there is radar connected to the display, it can be calibrated using the calibration wizard on the screen. Tap the next arrow. The name of the configuration defaults to the vehicle name and implement name. You can edit the name of the configuration by tapping the keyboard icon. Tap the green check to complete the configuration setup. Tap the green check. Since the load and go feature built the controller based on what it detected from the connected ISOBUS control unit, it ensures that the display configuration and the ISOBUS configuration match, as indicated by the green check. Now you will be able to build a display configuration using the ISOBUS load and go feature of the in command displays. For more information on the in command display, please reference the display user guide. For more information on the ISOBUS liquid rate module, please reference the ISOBUS liquid feature user guide. If you'd like to see more short tutorials from AgLeader, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.